Hi everyone, can you hear me and see me? Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, and just so everyone knows, I'm mirroring my cell phone screen. So you guys can see my presentation, which is straight from my phone. I want the session to be very interactive, and I want you guys to ask questions, and I want to, us to be able to answer the questions that you guys have, and um, anything that you want to know. Um, so let's start. So I first want to say to you guys that people often get really scared or jittery about these new platforms. Um, the stories platforms on Snapchat, on Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp. Um, it really scares people. But just remember, and I hope you guys can see my screen properly, um, just remember that at the bottom of everything, at the foundation of everything, is a good story. Um, and for me, the story and content is the king, but equally as important is the structure of the story. And that's all that's changed. The formats have changed. The way we tell stories have changed. And only because the audiences have become younger and technology has, has become better. Um, so good story always wins. So always remember that. Um, and for me, one of the best stories that I can remember that really has touched me and that is memorable to me it's a story about a 30-year-old Rania Ibrahim, and she was stuck on the 23rd floor with her two kids um, in Grenfell Tower in London during the fire. Now, Grenfell uh, Tower caught on fire with the council, bu council building in London that caught on fire, and the entire building went down. Um, and she was stuck on the 23rd floor, and she did two things. Um, the first thing she did was she went live on Facebook, and the second thing she did was she did a Snapchat story. And I have a, I have just a, a small um, a video of a Snapchat story, so I'm just going to play this for you guys. I hope you can hear it. Um, and this was her story. Now that is an incredibly emotional video um, and for me it conveys something very important that even in life and death situations, even in the most crucial of circumstances, um, young people are going live and they're going to stories. This is how they communicate with the world and it's all, all their communication, their mechanism of contact is through the camera. And right now it's through live and it's through stories. It's through Instagram stories and Snapchat and WhatsApp stories and Facebook stories. Um, and it's through this format that people are communicating. So for me, that's, that, that, that says something about the world that we live in um, and the way that people communicate. So, Everyone will have seen at the top of your timelines, I'll go back to the presentation, at the top of all of your timelines, whichever social media platform you're on, are these little circles. And these little circles are stories. And if you click on them, you can, you can go ahead and choose which circles you want to click on. You click on them and they come up with pictures and videos and memes and GIFs and graphics and text. 
And it's all of this, it's the amalgamation of all of these different formats coming into one. And that's what's so special about this format. Um, it's an all-in-one format. And, and it's really taken over the way that we tell stories, the way that we consume stories. And it's been a revolution in video in itself. So my name is Sumeya Omar. And I co-founded a company called Hashtag Our Stories with my husband Yusuf. We'll be on a webinar on the 24th, I think. Yeah, talking about mobile journalism. But that's what we do. We are mobile journalists. We tell stories using our phones. Um, and right now, hashtag our stories, the premise of it is we're empowering and we're training communities around the world, communities that are really on the fringes of society, the traditional media are not listening to. Um, it's the voices that are not being heard. And for us, when we think of Trump being elected, when we think of Brexit, um, there was such a mismatch and disparity in what the polls and pundits were saying and what the me traditional media was telling us versus what people on the ground were really saying. And it's because of this di disparity and it's because of this miscommunication that we're, not, that we're, that we're predicting things that we're predicting wrong, basically. Um, so for us, it's really important to be able to um, delve into those communities, into those voices. For example, in the last... Um, month and a half. We've traveled to about 10 countries so far. Um, and we've been to Sri Lanka, where we trained a group of, of young people from South Asia or um, from different countries in South Asia, how to tell stories on their phones. We've met refugees in Serbia who have come from um, Algeria and from uh, parts of Africa and from Syria. And they've, they're now in Croatia, and they're trying to make their way to other countries. Um, and we, we've trained them, so now they're documenting their stories and their journeys, um, which we then take and create into shows. So follow our page, has, hashtag our stories, to find out more. Um, and this is basically, this video that we've done is basically shows um, the issue that we see and the issue that we're trying to solve. Um, so yeah, here's the video. We're the next billion mobile users and we won't be silenced. We're here to engage and inform. Empowering mobile storytellers to read about reform. We don't need satellite trucks, and that's a fact. Faster and cheaper than that. Good storytelling has always been about more voices. And mobile cameras simply means more choices. With more angles, perspectives, and truth than before. <laughs> There's a different way of telling stories. We need to explore. Let's not ignore traditional media success. But surely we're better than this. Our stories are being drowned and the conversation has ended. Truth and trust have been lost, but mobile storytelling can mend it. Finding narratives in the noise, we don't need to conform. Let's identify languages in loss and storm. See a lack of media diversity is what's really affecting me. We talk about fake news, but don't listen to enough real views. We know misrepresentation can lead to wars. So this is our cause. Hashtag, Hashtag our stories. What's yours? So yeah, that's what we're trying to do. For the last five years, um, Yusuf and I have lived in South Africa, we've lived in India, uh, we've lived in London, and right now we're digital nomads, so we don't really live anywhere, but we're, we're traveling trying to empower these communities um, and to be able to give them a platform to tell their stories. Um, so this brings me back to the stories format. Um, and we really have to think about the trajectory of of how this happened. Um, uh, it started off with Facebook timelines, um, and these were really te text heavy, made for desktop sort of approach. Um, you'd have to type in your status, upload a picture, which you'd have in some sort of gallery, um, things like that. YouTube um, felt like a little bit like TV. Twitter still doesn't have a great video experience. Um, and all of these platforms, whether you look at Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, they were all kind of made for distribution and not really for content creation. And this is where the stories format is really different. 
Um, and this is how we, Yusuf and I, use it differently. So let's start from the beginning. What is stories? So at its essence, it is a camera. And if you think about Snapchat, so Evan Spiegel is the CEO of Snapchat, and he's the founder as well, co-founder. And he calls uh, Snapchat a camera company. Um, and it's exactly what, we would, what I was talking about before with Rania's story. This camera has become our mechanism of contact. It's become our mechanism of communication with the outside world. Um, and for me, that will carry on happening in terms of uh, payment, in terms of VR, AI. The, the camera will basically be that mechanism into the rest of the world for, for a lot of stuff. Um, it's mobile and it's vertical. So unlike any other format, it's made for mobile. It is optimized for a mobile phone, for a mobile screen. And it's vertical. Um, so no longer do we have the 16 by 9 um, TV style, YouTube style of a video. It's now vertical. It's ephemeral. And this often is the thing that scares people the most, the fact that it lasts for 24 hours only, and it's only a 10 second video. Um, but for me, you can. there's many ways that you can make this ephemeral content evergreen. So the way that Yusuf and I use um, uh, Snapchat, for example, is that we use it as a content creation tool. So we use the tool, we use the app for what it's really good at. It's good for drawing. It's good for um, adding in stickers. It's good for um, filters. It's good for bitmojis, that kind of thing. So use it as a content creation tool. And you can download it and save it and then put it up to other uh, platforms like Facebook that are um, that are more evergreen, and, and that's how you can turn your ephemeral content into evergreen content that will last forever. Um, and yeah, so we think of our content, and I'll, and, and I'll get uh, a bit more into this um, in a bit, but we think of our content as a triangle, basically. Um, and at the bottom of that triangle is um, the content that we do the most, the content that gives us the biggest bang for our buck. Um, and as you go up the triangle is are things that you do less of and that give you less return on investment. Um, and right now, live and stories are basically at the base of our triangle. Um, because we're able to quickly create and edit on the fly, and it's all, especially Snapchat and Instagram stories, they're almost live. Um, it's easy for us to create quickly, download it, um, add it to other clips and shots that we have, and then create like a one minute uh, Facebook video. So create something more out of it and then um, upload it into Facebook um, so you have more evergreen content. So there's ways around the, uh, the ephemerality of it. Um, the most important and significant difference between stories format and the timeline and newsfeed and every other format is it's a lean forward approach. So when I'm watching a YouTube video, I'm leaning back, right? When I'm watching the television, I'm leaning back. But when I'm watching a story on Facebook or uh, on um, Instagram, or if I'm watching a snap on Snapchat, I'm leaning forward. And this is because I have to interact with that content. I need to swipe to go forward. I need to swipe to go backward. Um, and I need to screenshot, so I'm really interacting. And it's this whole idea that the audience is now in control of the narrative. They're in control of how fast or how slow that narrative goes. Um, and creating a story, for example, is not hard. It's really easy. So if I um, say, for example, I want to create a story about one ifra. So all I do is um, I'll go into Snapchat. And here I am. And I'll say, hi, I'm Samaya, and I am doing a webinar with uh, G. And it's amazing. There's people from all over the world um, listening in. So very quickly, I've created my 10-second snap. Now with uh, yeah. Judy, and I it's can amazing. Then, there's I'm people from all over the world. Mute that for um, a second. Uh, very quickly, I can go to the T at the top. And I can a webinar with uh, Judy, and it's amazing. Very quickly, I can go to the T at the top, I'm Samaya, and, and I can. I am doing a webinar with uh, Judy, and I can add it's in amazing. some text. People from all over the world um, listening in. If Hi, I, I'm Samaya, and sorry, I am this is doing. Not happening. I can add in some text. 
Um, I can change the color of that text. Hi, I'm Samaya I can send and to I it. am doing a webinar with uh, so if I say that, and I can then um, add an emoji Hi, I'm or a bitmoji rather I and I hope all of you guys have emojis. With, uh, I can even add in branding. So if I Hi, use I'm the Samaya scissor, the scissor icon, but I'll show you webinar. guys exactly how to do this later on when I show you some hacks. There's a scissor one that lets me do. Um, Hi, I'm Samaya, and I, am I could doing do like, a webinar with uh, Judy, and it's amazing. There's people from all over the world um, listening in. Like Hi, I could I'm take Samaya. any sort of sticker, and that's how I can brand my. That's how I can brand my my snap. And very quickly, I've created something really world, interesting, and that's um, really cool for young people. In. Hi, I'm Samaya. So I'll show you guys I'm, exactly how to do that later on. Okay, so why is it important? Why is, what's the power of the stories format? Why is everyone so into it? So let's get the numbers out of the way. Um, firstly, Instagram stories claim to have over 166, uh, sorry, Snapchat claim to have over 166 million daily users. Um, Instagram say that they have over 250 million daily users on their stories format. Um, so these are huge, massive numbers, but for me, it's not the reach that's important, it's the engagement. It's the time spent on these apps, it's the time spent making these videos. Um, on Snapchat, Snapchat claims that a Snapchat user spends about 30 minutes a day on the app, um, and Instagram say that I think it's 32 minutes a day on the app. And these are very young people. They're ranging from um, 14 to 30. Um, so it's a very young audience that you're trying to get to, that you that you have an in with, and they're spending lots of time on the app. Um, so the engagement is really, really high. And it's a new, more human way of connecting. Um, so for example, our, our Instagram feeds, they're very curated. We put the best of, our, of ourselves on there. We put the best of our travels and of our pictures and images on there. Whereas the stories format is far more, it just feels more real. And if you think of your Instagram curated content as the destination, then think of your stories um, as the um, journey to get there. Sorry, I'm just going to. Yeah, think of your stories as the journey to get you to, the, to that um, curated content. And it's the collective nature of it that's, that's so powerful. Um, like I said, the engagement is really high. People are spending 30 to 35 minutes on the app. And what that does is that it's created this culture not just of distribution and consumption. The people have become, your audience have now become your creators as well. Um, and it's not just about your profile like it is on Facebook, it's now our story. And that's exactly how we started Hashtag Our Stories. Um, it's this premise of we want to hear more voices from real people, not just from head and shoulder anchors on TV kind of thing. Um, so let's look at the platform. So I want to talk a little bit about this curated formats that have taken over these platforms. And that, for me, that's what's really interesting about them. Um, is the curation bit of it. I just want to see if there's any, sorry, I'll just keep going back in and out. Okay, cool. You guys are all still here. Awesome. Okay, so for me, it's the, it's the curation that's super, super exciting about it. Now, Snapchat, and I don't know if you guys have seen this, um, a couple of months ago, they launched Maps, Snap Maps. And Snap Maps look like this. So it basically shows you like heat, uh, heat uh, points of where things are happening. And it doesn't tell you how to get somewhere, but it shows you where to go. It shows you where interesting and cool things are happening. It shows you where lots of video is coming out from. Um, and that's very important for social discovery. If you're in the business of uh, wanting to find voices, find really amazing angles um, and things that are happening um, at the minute, 
this is a great way of doing that, of discovering those voices. So the heat maps. And, and for breaking news, that it, it's, it works so well. For example, CNN, some of their first verified footage of the Paris attack came from a Snapchat live story. Um, and I think I have... Yeah, so media houses can do two things. Uh, basically, they can use it to verify their content. Um, so if you go onto the snap map and if you see something, for example, say Hurricane Irma, if you go in there and you'll see footage coming out of there, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really amazing way to verify that footage. But it's not just for breaking news. Um, because you have this highly engaged audience who are spending so much time on the, um, on the app, um, it's become super hyper-local and searchable content that you can find on there. So Snapchat claimed to have over a million searchable stories a day. So if you go, and they're using image recognition to um, curate these stories, if you go and search for a blue jacket on Snapchat on, in the search function, they have used, they have automated um, this curation of uh, uh, using image recognition, um, using sound, um, they, they're scouring video even for images, so they will go and search for um, a blue jersey, if that's what you want to find, and it will come up with video and pictures and content of every time someone's wearing a blue jacket or if every time someone mentions a blue jacket. Um, so it's made for this really hyper-local and searchable content. And this is what's doing really well on social right now. Um, and I believe that the curation of this hyper-local content is what is going to cure this millennial FOMO, this fear of missing out that everybody has. Um, because your best friend's birthday party will be a story, and so will every other news event um, Everything that you ever need to know, every single piece of information that you need to know will now be a live story. And it's not that far away. We're, we're at a point where Snapchat have created. So, for example, if I go into Snapchat right now, and if I go into my maps, so I'm in Abu Dhabi right now. And you can see that's my Bitmoji and uses Bitmoji. I can see exactly what's happening. So the, my heat spots around uh, the UAE are Burj Khalifa, uh, Ras Al Khaimah. But if I go to, say, let's see what's happening in South Africa. Not a lot. <laughs> so if I go into Johannesburg, it'll show me video coming out of Johannesburg. How amazing is that? And I can see, um, so for example, and, it, and, it, and it'll show me, it, and, and Snapchat curates it such that they create these live stories. And if you'll see, they all have names. Um, I just want to find something that's interesting that's happening. So for example, if I go into Saudi Arabia, and now this is a view that not many lists get. Um, view of what's happening in Mecca, what's happening um, um, in that part of the region. And it's, and, it's a, and it's a view that we don't normally get except from like a, a TV broadcast um, sort of way. So if I go in there right now, I'm going to see a completely different perspective. Like this is a different perspective of people's lives in Saudi Arabia. So it's really awesome the way that they're curating. Um, oops, where was that? So for example, I recorded this when Hurricane Irma happened um, because everybody was going to TV and I was seeing the same shots everywhere. So I decided to see what was happening on Snapchat Maps and on Instagram Stories. So Instagram Stories have their own curation that they call location stories. And all you do is you go and search on your explore button. It's this button here. And if you search, for example, a hashtag Irma, 
um, you'll see at the top there's a circle, and that is a story of video. So they've curated video that people have used the hashtag Alma, where people have used the hashtag Alma. Oops. Okay, I don't think that video is playing. Um, and Facebook and Periscope has, have basically taken that to a whole nother level. They're doing that with lives. So Facebook are curating all the lives that they're seeing on Facebook, um, and they're creating these really curated uh, live stories. Um, and so that's on an even further level from Snapchat and Instagram, because Snapchat and Instagram are not really live, they're what I like to call almost live. Um, but if we can do that, Snapchat and Periscope are doing that on a live, um, in a live way, that it takes it to a whole nother level. Um, and the thing is that lives as well are starting to look more and more like the stories format. So this is one of the lives that we did in Serbia with some refugees. And you can see we've written on the we've written some text on the on the live. Um, if you go back to the live, you can now click on the screen. So you can tap to go forward 10 seconds. You can tap to go backward. So the user interface of it has become exactly like stories format, and it will continue to become like that. So how do we gather stories on Snapchat? So we have all of this content. We can't do it at the scale um, that Snapchat and Instagram stories can. Um, but we can learn from them. We can learn the kinds of stories that they're telling. We can learn from the way that they're curating their stories. So like I said, your audience are not just your audience anymore. They're also your curators. Um, they're also your creators, sorry. So they're creating a lot of content that's coming onto the platform. Um, a couple of ways that you can use it to, to gather those voices. Firstly, uh, verified storytellers. So the Hindustan Times, um, they were doing a story on going back to school um, and going, sorry, going to university. And they took this group of six students who were trying to get into university. Um, and they taught them how to use Snapchat. And they then let them go out into the world and go about their lives. And they then curated this content so that they had all of this content coming in. Um, and they created the first ever Snapchat reality show. And it was called Campus Calling. Um, oops. I don't know where's the video for that either. So basically, they created this, this um, uh, and, and I'll put the, um, uh, I'll show you guys in, in a second, but um, they created a Snapchat, ever Snapchat reality show. It's really cool. You should check it out. Um, and then Supernet in Norway, they do a really cool way of gathering um, stories. So they ask their really young audience on Snapchat what they think about world affairs. So they'll ask, like, a 12-year-old Donald Trump or whatever it is. And then they get these voices coming in through the chat section of Snapchat or of Instagram, um, direct messages. And then they put this in the last 10 minutes of their TV um, bulletin. So it's a really nice way to, as a tail ender, to um, use those voices to hear another perspective. So how do we present news on, uh, how do we present uh, news and content on the stories format? The first thing is to define your purpose. Um, you need to understand exactly why you're on the platform. What is your strategy? Are you there because you want to gain more followers? Are you there because you want to uh, use it as a content creation tool? So think about the reason that you're there. So first strategy, I've created an anagram. It's S-N-A-P-C-H-A-T. It's very easy to remember. Uh, but it's basically some uh, tips and tricks on how to use these, um, these formats to tell better stories. The S is for suspense and engagement. Now, for me, for all, all formats, whether you're doing a Facebook Live, um, whether you're doing a stories format, suspense and engagement are the most important pillars of, of, the, of that storytelling. So suspense, um, because I'm uploading... Um, um, because I'm not uploading it like a YouTube video where I'm uploading like a 10 minute or 20 minute video at one time and I'm uploading throughout the day as the stories format is, 
um, I need to create some sort of suspense in my storytelling so that people want to come back to see how the story is going to end. And, and the only way that people will want to come back is that if they have that, that um, sense of suspense. So much so that sometimes me as the storyteller, even I don't know how the story is going to end. The engagement is important. It's critical because it's very different to every other platform. Um, there's no shares, there's no likes, there's no uh, virality to the platform. Um, so you really have to use that chat section. You really have to use the chat section to, um, uh, to understand the feedback that's coming through to really create connection with your audience. And where the magic of stories is, is at that intersection of stories uh, of the sense and engagement. Um, that is where you really get um, an amazing, that's where you hit the spot, magic spot in terms of storytelling on these formats. The second thing, the N is for native and niche. People don't want to see, young people don't want to see um, uh, people on their, uh, they don't want to see the older anchors with their mics and, the, and their ties on this platform. They want to see real and raw content. And that's why it's so easy to create in this content, uh, in this platform. That's why platforms open up into a camera because it's all about uh, creating content. Um, it's all about sharing that content. So be really native and be really niche on, on, the, on the platform. A is for art. So this entire presentation that I'm showing you right now was created on Snapchat. The fact that I can do that, the fact I can create a presentation and I can add a bit mode and I can add all of these verification tools like the time and date stamp and I can draw and I can change colors. It really is the most creative format that, you, that you'll get in terms of um, a really cool looking format. So use that. Use the tools for what they are good at. P is for personality. So you want to put your really young people, you want people who have big, big and bold personalities who are not afraid uh, to be themselves. That's the kind of person that does well in this format. C is for consistency. So every time I upload a post to Facebook or on Twitter within one hour or so, it's buried under the timeline. With the stories format, it's the opposite. Every time I upload a new story, every time I upload a new snap, it keeps going to the top of people's timelines. So for this reason, you need to be super consistent with your content. You need to be uploading throughout the day so that people, again, want to come back to see what your content is and so that you're always at the top of people's timeline. Um, so consistency is super key and important. H is for hype. It's such a good tool for creating hype around events, around um, another story that you're doing on another platform. It's really good to um, create that hype and then migrate that audience. And because you have a highly engaged audience who are looking at the app um, regularly and they're spending a lot of time on the app, they're highly invested, they're loyal, um, uh, uh, they're, they're a loyal audience. So if you say to them, like, uh, five days before your event or five days before you have a documentary coming out or, or anything, a couple of days before something big is going to happen. If you say to them, um, if you go behind the scenes or if you um, show them like an exclusive look, a behind the scenes look, and then at the end of those days you say to them, hey, come with me and see the finished product on my website and TV, um, at the product launch or whatever it is, they are highly invested in your content and they're highly invested in your brand, so they will come. Um, and this is how you can drive that migration and referral from, from the platform into other platforms. Um, and it's also a good way to monetize, of course. Um, then the A is for arrange and prepare. So even though you want to create the suspense so that sometimes even you as a content creator don't know what's going to happen, you still need to do some preparation. And that preparation is really understanding what the technology is and what it can do. For example, there's some, here are some planning elements. So on Instagram stories and on Snapchat, you can now link out onto a website. That's super important to know because then you can understand at which point after three snaps, for example, or after five snaps, you want to put a link out. You don't want to inundate your, your audience with link outs and with swipe ups. 
but you want to put it at opportune moments. Um, so planning that is really important. The other thing is location. So, for example, on location stories, uh, sorry, on in your Instagram stories, every time you put a location on, so say I'm in Abu Dhabi right now, and I, I've been doing some Instagram stories today, and on every single one of my Instagram stories, I've located myself. I've put the location stamp on. And this is because when Instagram is curating their feed, when they're curating their Abu Dhabi story, they might pick mine because I've attached my location, might pick my story to be a part of that bigger curated story. And then I've increased my discoverability to way bigger than just my audience. So to increase your discoverability on any of these stories uh, uh, platforms, you want to um, always tag your location and always put your hashtag in. That's super important. And then resetting the stage. So remember that your audience are coming in and out. The same people that have watched your first snap might not be the, um, the same people that have watched the third snap. So you want to continue to reset the stage and remind people of what the story is about. Um, radio people do this really well. Um, also, it depends on if you have a global audience, for example, then people are waking up and going to bed at different times. Um, and then because of the 24-hour cycle, they might miss some of the snaps or some of the stories. Um, so you want to continue to reset that stage. And then the T is to engage the thumb. And you've spoken about this a little bit. The fact that um, it's a super interactive platform, it's a super interactive format, um, you have to tap to go forward um, and tap to go backward. And all of these years we've been trying to create these thumb stopping content. We want people to linger. Um, but this is so different. This is the opposite of that. We want to create content um, that engages the thumb, that is super interactive so that people are clicking. They're clicking to go forward because it's going to increase my completion rate. They're clicking to go backward because it's going to increase my retention rate. They're uh, screenshotting because I, it helps me understand what, how my audience is feeling and to poll them and to engage with them. Um, so we really want to create content that is, that is short, that is snappy, um, and that is really connecting with the audience. So think of your presence on the stories format like a TV show, but not one show, like many shows. Uh, because if they're going down the super hyper-local, curated stories kind of, uh, of route, um, then we need to, and our stories need to be super focused, and they need to be super uh, niche and hyper-level. Um, and if you, have, if you guys have seen, for example, um, Facebook's Watch tab or um, Snapchat's Discover tab, they're starting to look a lot like Netflix. They're starting to look like TV, actually. They're going after this, these TV dollars because there's not much money left in digital anymore. Um, so they're investing more and more in uh, more and more in content create in content creators and in exclusive original content. Um, uh, for example, on the watch tab, Facebook is now spending a lot of money to um, have original content come in, and it's kind of um, a, a longer length pieces. Uh, Snapchat is still investing in short pieces, um, but again, it's the show kind of concept. Um, so to really notice and to really get um, into the stories format, you have to think about your content like a TV show or like a series, basically. Um, so TV has died, it's just evolved. Um, it's become shorter and it's become more snappy and um, ten, in 10, 10 seconds and ephemeral. Um, but it hasn't died, it's just, exactly, it's just evolved. Um, and the thing that we, basically our uh, mission for Hashtag Our Stories is more cameras, more perspectives means more truth. So we're trying to gather as many voices as we can um, using these formats, using these social platforms um, uh, to give people a different insight and using these platforms for exactly what they're good at, looking beyond the dog doggy photos, looking beyond the, um, uh, the flower crowns and these kinds of things and using them for what they're good at. And I spoke about two very important things. The first one is use it as a content creation tool. Um, it's a built-in editor. 
most people don't even know that they're editing. They're basically editing content. It's a built-in editor. So use it as a content creation tool. Um, and then download it onto your camera roll and repurpose it across every other platform. So turn that ephemeral content into evergreen content. And the second thing that I spoke about was this idea of curation and discovery on these platforms. So use them, use this amazing technology that they have that where uh, they've automated image recognition and video image recognition and sound and, and all of these amazing things. Use it to discover voices, use it to discover more content um, so that you can build on your own content as well. So I want to take you guys to um, basically to do some of the uh, actual Snapchat and Instagram stuff. So I want to show you guys some quick hacks because I'm sure that you guys know the basics of how to create a Snapchat. And I just showed you guys literally just pressing down um, the red button. Um, I'll just go into, into Instagram, for example. And if I create a new one, and I'll just... So, hey, I'm doing a webinar. I'm in a hotel room, by the way. That's me, my laptop. Um, hi, everyone. So, I've done that. And I want to show you guys some, some hacks on... Um, my laptop. Um, hi, everyone. So, hey, oh, I'm the doing sound. a Okay. I want to show you guys some hacks on Instagram stories. The first thing is, if I go to the pen my, you and you, the, my, the, the, you have to make the oh sorry the okay. with the Hi, hello so hey i'm doing a webinar can you guys hear me now room, by the way that's me my laptop um hi everyone so And hear you. Oh, sorry, I was talking it. Okay, can you hear me? Oh, no, we can see and hear you. Yes. Okay, awesome. Okay, so if I if I go into Instagram Stories, I'm going to show you guys some hacks very quickly, um, and you'll see that there's colors at the bottom, and there's only so many colors. If I want to get more colors, all I have to do is press down on one of the colors, like that. And I have a whole other layer of colors that nobody knew were there. So I could choose like some obscure color that, and I could. Yeah. And then if I've, so I've written a color that I re can't really see because it kind of merges in with the background. So if I want to create a backboard for that content, and a lot of people, Sometimes just draw below it, but it looks kind of untidy. All I do is I go to my emojis. So the emoji is the little smiley face at the top. And I'm just going to take anyone. I'm going to take um, this purple one, for example. And I'm just going to um, expand it out. My, I think we've, uh, okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay, I can hear you again. And you can zoom into something. So that's a one-handed zoom. Okay, and then something cool that I want to show you guys, so that's and this is really nice for branding. Um, I'm gonna go to, for example, one ifra, and if I want to use my branding, 
for as part of my Instagram stories, and people often find it hard to brand their content without making it look um, uh, super produced. So I'm just going to go to their logo, for example. I'll just go to that one. And I'm going to take a screenshot of it. And then I'm going to go into Snapchat. Oops. I'm going to go into my memory camera roll. Okay. And in my camera roll, you'll see that here's the picture I just uh, screenshot, the one for a picture. And if I slide my finger up, you'll see that a couple of options come up bottom. One of them is a little pencil. I'm going to click on the pencil. And then I'm going to click on the scissor on the side. And I can cut out this. I can cut this out as a sticker. So I'm just going to trace along. And I've cut it out as a sticker. I'm going to press done, discard. And then when I take a, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a picture of the webinar. That's very meta. Um, and if I go into my emoji section, you'll see I have there's a there's a a scissor icon at the bottom, and this these are all my cutouts. So I've cut that out, and it's now a sticker which I can use there or there as kind of a branding for what I'm doing. The other really cool thing I can do is, and I know you guys probably know this, but um, you can swipe to change your filters. But if you want more than one filter, say I want a black and white filter, but I also want, okay, I want this filter, but I also want a uh, date. Okay, that's the date. Yep. And I also want a location. I can do three um, filters at the same time. And the way I did it was, and then you hold your finger down in the middle of the screen and swipe with the other finger. So now I have two filters on and I and I want one more I want the location so I'm going to put hold my finger down again and I'm going to swipe again. Sorry to my we've lost your screen could you just check your screen share? Oh have you lost it? Yeah we've lost your screen share. We it see seems your to be okay. uh, cursor. Yeah okay now it works. Now it's, uh, Is it fine? Screen share. But we uh Can could you, you see bring it? yeah bring the Instagram yeah, it's a screen forward. Yeah, thanks. Yeah? Can you see it now? Yes, okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so should I repeat that? Uh, I'm afraid yes, <laughs> please do. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so if I want to add more than one filter on, I'm going to add my first filter by swiping. So that's the one I want. And then I want to add a, a, um, a date. So I'm going to put my finger down. And I'm going to swipe with the other finger, and that's the date. So now I have two filters on, and I want to do one more. So I want to, I'm going to put my finger down again, and with my other finger, I'm going to swipe. And here's all my location stamps. And I'm going to choose that one. So now I have three um, filters on the same snap, which is really cool. And I have my little branding on the top. Um, I can add, like I said, if I press a button, I can add a, a link out to the website. Um, I can draw something. And, and these are also really cool. So that if you click on the heart option at the bottom, um, you'll see a whole lot of um, other, like, like there's hearts and stars and things like that. And I could use this to write. Um, which is really cool, really cool for effects. Um, I'm trying to think of what other hacks they are. The main ones are the, the cutting tool, which is really cool and really useful, even for stories 
um, if you want to bring in like people's faces um, and things like that is really cool. Um, and then the photos are a good one. The one-handed zoom is a good one. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know if you guys have any questions or anything else that you want me to talk about uh, in terms of stories, I would love to help. I well, think I'm, you, uh, I might thanks, be over uh, time. Actually, uh, you're well within uh, time. Uh, you've got probably another five more minutes if you have anything else to present. Uh, it's wonderful that, uh, you know, in fact, I think if, you, if there are questions on demos, could you just hold up your phone uh, to the camera, to your webcam, so oh, that okay, we can actually see okay. your hands. I mean, I'm, uh, this is the first okay. time we're actually, it's very exciting because we're the first time we're doing a, a screen share live in a webinar environment uh, in this series of webinars. Uh, and, you know, so Maya's, uh, you know, been able to demo how it works so we can actually see the interface of her, her phone on the screen. At the same time, um, you know, now that we're in this format, you've got the webcam uh, on Samaya as well, so we can actually see uh, how she swipes and how she puts in the filters and all that. So I would like to, to invite your questions, uh, folks, as you know, you're thinking of your questions to ask Samaya, please take, us, uh, take, take advantage of this, this opportunity to ask her as many questions as you like. Okay, and um, perhaps while you're uh, thinking about your questions, um, you know, maybe we can, um, maybe Smile can talk a bit about, um, sorry, it's storming over here. <laughs> you, can, you can probably hear the... Oh my the gosh. <laughs> that sounds like an angry storm. <laughs> yes, we're having a big storm in Singapore right now. <laughs> and you're probably bone dry. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, you know, I've got a question here about, uh, you know, you said to, to get around the issue of uh, the ephemeral quality of uh, such a video oh, really last yep. 20 hours. But um, it means then repurposing your content across so many platforms. How do publishers actually cope with, uh, you know, the, the proliferation of platforms? If you're saying, you know, you have to also you know, recut this and put it on your website, recut it and put it on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, that's that's the kind of like that's a lot of platforms to be serving at one go. It is a. You're right. It is a lot of platforms, and obviously, a lot of publishers have big teams. Uh, but for example, for Yusuf and I, it's just the two of us, and we're and we're sharing on on many platforms. Um, and Yusuf might speak about speak more about this about the prioritization of content and others. But the triangle that I was speaking about, and I'll just I'll just put it up here. So the triangle that, I, and I'm drawing it right now, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. The triangle that I was speaking about, this is how we prioritize our content and this is how we choose what we're doing. Oops. There. So the first thing that we do, and this is what we do the most of, and it's ba everything that we do is based on return on investment. And when I mean return on investment, I mean, um, I mean, how much time are you spending versus the reach that you're getting, the number of views, the engagement, um, how much are you getting back from it in terms of social? And the highest return on investment that you could possibly get from a live, and that means Facebook Live, Instagram Story Live, a live format, because all you have to do is press the red button or press the white button, right? And you're live and your content is there. So we prioritize, we do loads of live. So we prioritize live over everything else and it makes it easy um, uh, because we have a foundation of, of what our content is. And above that, we'll do, above that, we'll do stories. So that's almost live. So that's Snapchat stories, Instagram stories, whatever kind of stories format you're on. Um, then we do um, explain a sort of stories. So this is where we're taking a lot of pictures um, and very static sort of content. And this is the AJ Plus sort of model. Um, they're taking static kind of content and they're putting graphics and they're putting uh, big subtitles on it and creating something cool with it. Um, and on top of that, we'll have Mojo. So Mojo, obviously, it requires someone to go out into the field, even though it's just on your phone and it's not expensive. 
it still takes a lot more time. You need um, the some essential shots that you need. You need interviews, that kind of thing. So it takes a lot more time. So Mojo is a bit higher up. And Mojo for us is a culmination of live stories, explainer, um, that kind of thing. Um, so Mojo is a bit higher up. And then at the top of the triangle, we have the things that we really love to do. The things that we really love to do, but they don't really have, they don't really create that much engagement or uh, they don't really have, they're very niche sort of content. And the answer to your question about, like, firstly, if you have a content strategy, whatever your content strategy is, the foundation and, and, and how you're layering your content, that's the first step. The second step and the thing that miss, that is missing for us in a lot of newsrooms is that you have, for example, I just want to get, Quickly going to search for an emoji, but usually you'll have. Okay, I'm going to abandon that. Usually you'll have um, a social media person or a mojo person shooting here, and then they have to go to um, a social media manager. It needs quality control. It needs to go to a lot of people before it gets to the top. Before it gets online, it has. It, it's it's a lot of Zs basically. Um, and what we propagate is that, and this is why the live at the bottom of your of your content format of a strategy works really well, is because um, we propose going straight from the phone and giving people in your newsrooms, in your um, uh, in your companies, as much creative control as you can give them. Um, so allowing them to post straight from their phones up to social. So then you have, don't have those Zs, and then you don't have the problem of um, you don't have enough content on one platform, um, and it becomes easier to repurpose because then you have you you create. And another thing that we do is so say in a newsroom um, we try to create these basically champions in 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 each of the in each of the teams so you'll have like a mojo champion in each of the teams um or a social champion and then that person is responsible and it goes up to that person and that person is then responsible for um uploading um up to social but there's no real i guess there's no real way out out of repurposing your content and making it super easy. Um, I think the answer might be that we use our phones and that's why it's super quick. It's much quicker. We load straight to social because you're creating on these platforms, you're creating on Snapchat and on Instagram, and you're looking at it in the way of a consumer, looking at it from a mobile perspective already. It makes it easier to create it faster for mobile. We're editing on our phones. Um, we're, we're publishing on our phone, so the entire workflow is easy and it's quick. And it's um, and I think if you really want to really get workflow, if you want to repurpose across a lot of platforms, the phone is a great way to do that. Are you actually responding as well to Karen's question? Karen from South Africa. Oh, she has a question. Uh, on is it okay to repurpose so-called traditional news for these platforms, or do we need to rethink the kind of news we present here? Sorry, can you say it again? I, I don't think I can see it on here. Uh, it's there at the bottom. If you scroll down to the bottom, let me change the uh, yeah yeah the, yeah. Can you change the, uh, the room yeah so you can view the uh, chat more easily? Hang on a second. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, so Karen has a question on repurposing traditional news. Okay, is it okay to repurpose traditional news for these platforms, or do we need to rethink the kind of news we present here? I would definitely think, I would definitely say um, that we need to rethink the kind of news, and that's why I said one of my first statements was that yes, content is king and content still matters the most, but the structure and the way that we're talking, our language, the way that we're communicating with, the, with this audience and social is just very different. 
Um, and so for me, repurposing of traditional content doesn't really work. Um, and for example, a lot of the structural, um, so I'll just go back here. A, lo a lot of the stories structurally are very different on social versus on TV. On TV, for example, um, a, a regular story, what you'd have is, is Um, kind of look like this, like you'd have uh, sort of like image, just like beautiful image up first, and then it would um, it would uh, it would build up to sort of a climax, and then it would it would it would um, uh, tailor off like that. Um, but you'd start off by saying, "Hi, uh, I'm Sumeya, and I'm in." this and this is what I'm doing kind of thing. Whereas in social, it's very different because in social, you're, you want your first and most controversial line or your most interesting uh, uh, sentence and your most like, um, what is the word? Uh, yeah, like your, your most interesting shot, you want it to be first and it goes like that, something like that. actually. It goes like that. So the structure of, of a social story is very different to the structure of a TV story. Because especially on social, for example, on Facebook, you have three seconds, basically, to, to, um, uh, to catch your audience. It's a very different format to TV, where people are, again, it's a very lean back approach. So think about this, um, uh, this concept of lean back versus lean forward and, and, and the concept of people on your timeline, it's literally just so easy to, to go past people's timeline. So all you have is three seconds. And so the whole technique of how you tell a story on social is very different. So yeah, you could use like interviews and stuff, I guess, from traditional from a traditional format, but you just need to change the language. You need to change the structure to be more socially friendly. Hmm, okay, thanks. Uh, we've got a question from uh, Mary Pauline de Rosario from the Philippines. Uh, if you'd like to scroll down to her question about uh, the demographics of Instagram users, is there a way for news outlets, especially newspaper companies, to present news on Instagram? Is there, is there a way for news companies to present news on Instagram? Is that the question? Yes, that's right. Okay, I'm going to show you guys some examples of news companies that are doing really well on Instagram. I'm going to show it to you on Snapchat because that's kind of my uh, my uh, where I do my presentations. Just, uh, just but remember to I bring, have a slide. Yeah, bring the window uh, yes. to the front. I keep forgetting that. I'm so sorry. Hmm. Okay, so here's how news organizations are doing stories right. The first one I have is, again, I hope it loads, um, is BBC. And this is, so I'm going to show you, um, this is a debate sort of style of content. And the story is about Fox King. So she's given a, a little bit of context. But how cool is that? Like they've just the format using the tools. That's a great first shot because you can see the uh, the foxes or the dogs. It pulls you in. She's using all the tools, all the format to do a really cool debate style uh, piece. The second type of content is, is opinion. Wait, that was. Okay, the I second type of content is an explainer sort of Wow, oh, okay. Yeah, just it's still loading. Uh, we can, I can see your cursor. Yeah, okay, now we're back on explainer. Can you see it now? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, the second type of content. Um, so BBC are, are doing uh, stories really well on Instagram. The second type of format um, that I see coming through from news on Instagram stories is the explainer format. And this is where you have like sensitive subjects, um, 
uh, like, for example, this story is about Ramadan. It's not a sensitive subject, but it, subject, but it's something where people don't really understand um, what it is and and what it like and things like that. So this is an explainer piece, but it's done in a very Instagram cool sort of way. It's done by the Guardian. So Ramadan diaries again, lots of um, emojis um, using the tools. Ramadan is a holy month for Muslims, where we fast during daylight hours. Again, it's just like it's it's a cooler Muslim. version of a Q and A. Um, then you have like the vlog style of format. Um, this is not a news organization, but news organizations do this. Um, CNN does this. But this is an example of GoPro. It's a very selfie style of um, uh, a selfie for stories. Um, it's a vlog style. My name's Sam Evans. The next few days we're going to be hanging out on IG stories uh, in the lead up to the GoPro Mountain Games. I'm going to paint the situation. Again, in all of his snaps, he's put his location. Again, in all of his snaps, he's put his location. Again, in all of his snaps, he's put his location. Discoverability. Got a bus and an RV. We all met up yesterday afternoon. Got off that flight. We then met at the RV camps. Very fast person. Very Casey Neistat sort of way. Um, a very interesting way that not many people do and not many people can do right is the long form way. The New York Times, for example, New York Times is normally known for really good long form pieces anyway. So they've taken what they're good at on their website um, and on their traditional platforms and they've brought it into this new platforms. And they, but they do it with pictures and text um, that really fit the Instagram style. So they're, so they're doing long form just with pictures and text. And very human sort of stories as well. So people read on. So they're a cool, a cool um, one to check out. And for me, the most important, like I, and, I, and I said this in my presentation, is that these platforms are starting to look more like Netflix and more like TV. Um, and that's why shows are so important. And if you want to have some lo longevity in your content, then shows are the way to go. And Snapchat themselves are the ones to look at when you look for inspiration in terms of shows. Snapchat has some original shows of their own that they've created. Good Luck America is a US political show um, on Snapchat created for the platform. The second one is they have a reality show called Second Chances, and it's about uh, young people making up and breaking up kind of thing, um, again, made specifically for the platform. So I would go, if you want to have some inspiration on show side, I would go into that Discover section of Snapchat, and I would look at exactly what Snapchat is producing themselves in terms of shows. Um, this example was Good Luck America. I'm Peter. I've been covering politics for a long time. America's in a pretty weird place right now. Let me show you what's really going on. Again, the voice and the language is very like, let me show you what's really going on. It's what people want to hear. People want to hear honesty. Um, and people want to hear raw and real um, words and language. Um, so again, structure and language is super important. So yeah, so these are news organizations that I really like, and these are formats that they're using to, um, especially for Instagram stories and for Snapchat stories. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Um, so interesting. I mean, we're actually seeing now very professionally created uh, shows uh, and, and long form features. It's almost like a slideshow, but in a vertical format. <laughs> it kind of exactly. Requires That's exa exactly. To rethink, yeah. You know, the uh, format of <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we're waiting for, yeah, for no, professions really to come in. <laughs> um, does the GoPro shoot in a vertical format now? For stories. Yeah, that was specifically for Instagram. Or was that used, you know, made using a, a GoPro camera or, or was that just kind of like shot on? Oh no, that was used. I think that was just used with their phone. phone. But they were. Um, 
Uh, actually, let me see. Are they branding it with Let me GoPro? Have a look at this. Because as far as I know, the GoPros shoot in a, in a horizontal format. Hey group, my name's Sam Evans. Okay, so he, when he's hanging out on IG stories uh, in the lead up to the GoPro Mountain Games, I'm going to paint the situation for you. Basically, we've got some GoPro. Yeah, so those shots were just done on a phone, but they're about to take you behind the scenes. I see. To a ah. GoPro event. That's what they're using it for. So they're using it to create hype. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, it. Yeah. Uh, you know, guys. You know, we've got about maybe five more minutes. So in the meantime, uh, you know, please, uh, you know, key in your questions for Sumaya. There's only about another five minutes left. In the meantime, maybe uh, Sumaya, you can talk a bit about the heat points or the snap map. Yes. Uh, how sort of private are those feeds, or are they only, you know, sort of uh, collating, uh, pulling together all the feeds uh, from people who make their, their feeds public? Yes. So it's only for people that make their feeds public. Um, and it is, you can, not everybody can see you on the map. You could make your map private. My map is not private, so I'm on the map, but you can, you can make yours private. And it only is, so there's kind of a permission for it. So if I go there, and if I, if I click on, so I've taken a picture, and if I click on the blue button on the side, it gives me a couple of options here, yeah? It gives me, the first thing I see is I can send it to my, my story. I can send it to our story. Our story is their curated stories. If I click on that, I'm giving them permission to make it part of my, a part of their curated stories. If I just click on my, if I just say my story, then it's only going to be my friend yet. But if I say, our story, then I'm giving them permission to, to make my story part of their bigger curated story. Does that right. make sense? Yes, totally. It, it totally makes sense and it addresses the concerns of uh, privacy, of course. Yeah. Yeah, but wow. It, uh, so it, it really kind of means that this could be the start yeah. of having a daily editor kind of look at the heat map each day to see what people are putting out. Yeah. Exactly. If they, they should be, if they're not, then they're already late. If they're not looking at it. There's one other cool thing that I want to show you guys. So have you got, so have you guys seen Bitmojis? Right? So June, June Lee, I hope you have a Bitmoji. I don't. <laughs> you don't? But you have to get one. I know. I want to show you. A Bitmoji, like, because they've done... Okay, look at that. That is my Bitmoji. Okay, you need to put like it, uh, bring it forward. Yeah. Oh, it. It oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So that is my Bitmoji. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's an augmented Bitmoji. I can go in and around. I can look inside the car. <laughs> Hello? Does it come with the music? Does it come with music? Oh, I think the music is... <laughs> it's going off for some reason. Does it come built in with music or is that your music theme? No, it comes built in with the music. That's hilarious. But look at that, the fact that I can go inside and around and up and down. Imagine what that's going to do when we can create any story we want like that. If we can create that level of interactivity in our stories, where we can literally, with our phones, we've created an entire new world where people can go, like, people can literally look inside uh, the hurricane, or they can look inside anything. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a game-changing way of storytelling. So that's going to be a new job role now in the newsroom called oh, the screen, screen capture, capture warrior. Screen capture warrior. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's like, and, and they keep bringing things, uh, new things out every day. 
Yeah, we can take one more question. Yeah, one more question. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, one more question. No other questions? Well, in the meantime, uh, I'd just like to let everyone know that uh, so Maya is giving a workshop in Singapore at the end of the month, on the 31st of October, and this is at Digital Media Asia by One Efra. Maybe uh, so Maya might want to tell us a bit more about what you're yes. covering at your workshop. So um, I think my workshop is also uh, focused on stories, but I'll be talking about mobile journalism as a whole as well. Um, and Yusuf will be with me as well, and he is really cool. <laughs> um, but please follow our journey on hashtag our stories. Um, and we're using a lot of these tools that we're showing um, in our own business and in our own platforms. Um, to tell stories and to discover stories, um, find these voices. Um, but yeah, I'll be speaking a lot at, um, Yusuf will be doing one speech and I will be doing um, a workshop on stories and on mobile journalism. Mm, thanks a lot, Maria. Um, any other questions, guys? Any other questions? I'm putting up the poll for, for participants. Could you please help us spend 30 seconds to put in your responses? We really appreciate the feedback, and uh, this will also help uh, and be channeled to the sponsor of this uh, Strategic Media and Society uh, program, which this webinar is a part of. This is a program, a two year program sponsored by the Danish government. So we're very grateful uh, for their support in making all the programs that our Strategic Media and society participants have been taking part in for the last one and a half years or more. Uh, we have participants, 160 journalists from 88 media companies in 12 countries around the world, in Asia, Latin America, Middle East, and Africa. And some of the uh, uh, participants are with us today. Thanks for joining us. And we also have uh, various um, um, newsrooms of uh, participants as well as the uh, folks in, in their, net, their own networks as well who have shared this information of this webinar. So we're you know, very glad that you could join us. I think this is really an awesome session from Sumaya. Thank you so much for putting everything out there live. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks for all the questions as well. I think that now we all now have to you know, take our Snapchat and Instagram a lot more seriously. It's not just a platform for many pictures and you know, funny videos. Mm. We can actually start thinking of uh, creating new um, news engagement and news stories out of the content. It, it, it really uh, requires a lot of thinking of newsroom roles. So this is not something that I think will sort of happen easily. Do you have any tips on, on that, Samaya, in terms of how to sort of configure the newsroom for this, this sort of story format? I think, um, so, I think Yusuf is probably a better person to ask that because he's worked in many newsrooms. But I think that some that something that newsrooms need to do is they need to let go a little bit. Um, and it's that whole idea of the Zs that I've talked about. Like we just you just can't have that anymore because social is so quick. It's there's so many social platforms. It's so quick. News is breaking all the time before you can before traditional media can even deploy their cameras. Um, so I think it's about trusting your people, um, trusting them to go straight to social, um, trusting them to do more and more lives. Um, yeah, and I think that's a complete mindset, that complete change in mindset. Um, it's a completely different way of thinking. Uh, people are really afraid that Facebook is taking over the world and taking over their monetization and revenue streams and things like that. Um, but I think if we work more with these platforms like Facebook and like Snapchat and Instagram, um, we and if we work with them to develop the tools that we need to tell better stories, um, then it will then it will be amazing and we'll just all we'll have is better content. And so, these yeah. are tools which are I think it's free. These are tools which are very free. Yeah. Oh, I do think uh, in a lot of newsrooms, something that is missing is obviously diversity. Diversity in terms of um, race, 
in terms of gender, in terms of people from different economic backgrounds. And I think that that is a step towards that change. Um, uh, because if we have, and it's the same, the same rhetoric that I keep saying about more voices and more truth, the only way we'll have the voices and more truth is to bring these people into the newsrooms. And if we bring them into our periphery and into, an, into our environment, um, so diversify the newsroom. That's the first step. That's the first thing you can do. Bringing younger people into uh, board meetings, into your morning meetings, into the decision-making meetings, into your strategy meetings. Um, bring in a diversity of people in terms of age, race, culture, um, gender, everything. Diversify. <laughs> and that will indeed take our <laughs> that will in change. Yes, yeah, no. So that is the step. No. Yes. So that uh, you know leaves me to thank you, so Maya, for a, a really Maya interesting for and educational and live educational demo webinar conducted totally demo. live on the fly. You see totally Maya drawing and <laughs> highlighting and circling. <laughs> Highlighting and doing live <laughs> in front of us. Doing live. It's really, it's really interesting <laughs> and uh, stunning at the speed. Thank you so much for having me.